Hey there guys, and welcome back to Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. Yes, I know, two episodes on one day. Uh, I've completely- I got home from work, and I completely forgot I had somewhere to go in, like, 20 minutes. So I really- I wanted to make another video. Was planning on making Osiris Wrath, but I completely forgot that I had to go somewhere. So I had to make something that kind of fit within the 20-25 minute window that I had. And sadly, neither Arthur's Wrath nor Benta and Omniverse did, so here's another episode of Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate for you. Anyway, last episode we did the Log Icarus Urgent Quest. We drove them off pretty damn easily. And now we're going to the Tundra to fight the first real tricky slash difficult monster, even though you're not... You're not forced to fight this one first. But it is the Giganox. And it's in the Tundra, so you better bring hot drinks. Still using the Event Gun Lance because it is just too damn good. And I don't really have all that many great weapons yet. Don't worry, I'll get better ones fairly soon. Anyway, the Giganox is what we're going after. And if this guy is giving you trouble then get the armor set that I'm wearing right now. Why does this armor set come in handy so much? Well, it's because of one of its innate skills, namely negate poison, and the Giganox will pretty much poison you with everything it does. So, if you have an armor that has negate poison on it, you pretty much just grab his balls firmly squeeze them a little and then just lop them straight off if you wear the wrong armor you completely neuter the Giganox it just completely turns it into a joke it's still a little dangerous but not nearly as dangerous as when you're fighting it without an immunity to poison anyway there it is it's creepy disgusting leech looking thing that's way too big for its own damn good and ugh, just gives me the chills every time you see it also it craps out these big egg sacks that keep on spawning giggies until you destroy them they are pretty annoying so you might want to pop those as soon as the giganox craps them out anyway there it is it's actually not that big. It's fairly small, especially compared to some of the monsters we've been facing. But because it is like a creepy leech looking thing, it's also apparently made of rubber. This thing can stretch and pretty far as well. Giggy, get off me. Damn it. See, that's why you need to pop that thing ASAP. Alright. Oh, geez. Yeah, he will spend a lot of time on the ceiling, which is really annoying because you can't really get him when he's up there. Unless you're using a ranged weapon like the bow or bow gun, then I'm, I haven't tried it myself, but I'm pretty sure you can just keep shooting at him while he's on the ceiling. And maybe even get him to fall off because of... Because, like, when he takes too much damage when he's on the ceiling, he'll get stunned or fall off or something. Anyway... See, that's what he does with the stretching. He stretches his neck pretty far. It's actually really hard to dodge that. Oh, jeez. Oh, and this attack also really sucks. You really want to bring dung bombs for this. Because that attack will do a lot of damage. Uh, except, of course, if you throw a dung bomb, you're basically just throwing monster poop in his mouth, which uh, will break you free. Sadly, though, I didn't bring that many dung bombs for some reason. So, that's... That might end up costing me in the long run. Oh, jeez. That attack, just if you're anywhere to his left, it will hit you. You're pretty much only safe when you're on the right side of him. Oh, jeez. Oh, this guy is so nasty. And you know what the worst part is? He can do the uh, stretching with his back end as well. Which looks pretty much exactly the same like his front end. So I guess you could technically say that the Giganox has an ass face and uh, yeah just like his face his ass can also stretch he's got a real stretchy anus that's pretty nasty when you think about it oh geez 
So you pretty much have to be like to his right or way behind him for you not to get hit with that attack. Also his roar, it's pretty damn high pitched and also because it's in the cave it also echoes a lot and it causes like ice spikes to fall from the ceiling which will also damage you. So luckily though, if you get hit by one of those things, they don't really do that much damage and they break you free from the stun state that you're in when he roars. So you actually want one of those things to fall on your head. Even though the cowboy hat I'm wearing offers no protection against that sort of thing. <sighs> Dude, just stay down. Oh crap, this shit again. No. Alright, time to get the poop out. Here, eat some poop. Cha-Cha, you're not helping me at all. Sadly though, if you keep using the dung bombs on him, that'll get him to change areas an awful lot. Because that's pretty much what dung bombs are for. You throw them at monsters to make them move to a different area. They pretty much come in handy when you're doing like a quest with two monsters at the same time and you only really want to fight them one at a time, so you have to get the second one out of the area. Sometimes though, and I'm pretty sure that occurs like a lot more if you're in the higher ranks. As soon as you do that, the other monster will also immediately decide to go to a different area. They'll usually end up going to the same area and you're still gonna have to fight them both at the same time. Which sucks. I think I had that in the, uh... I think it was episode 70-something where I fight the high rank Nibblesnar for the Diablo showed up and what like would not leave me alone. I think I wasted like 10 dung bombs, all 10, you can only bring 10. And uh, I used them all. And I still had to deal with the Diablos most of the time. Quite a pain, but I managed to do it in the end. Damn it. So yeah, as you can see, he does a lot of poison spitting. He's also got this, I'm not sure if he's done it yet, but he's got this body slam that creates a huge poison cloud around him that you do not want to be in without immunity poison of course I don't really care about that attack because it doesn't do that much damage to me and I don't get poisoned so it's all good honestly see that attack that's what I was talking about okay I guess it wasn't really a body slam it's more like a big poisonous fart oh yeah he also does this he can also turn into rage mode he pretty much just turns black and he moves faster and I think he does a little more damage, but there's not much else about it. Oh crap. Ooh, psych. Oh jeez. I still hate that move. Oh. Gonna go repetitive on me? Alright. What also really helps, of course, is tagging him with a paintball, because then you can kind of see where he is when he's crawling on the ceiling without like having to change the camera angle. Which is sort of annoying. Sadly, though, I think he can go to Area 3, but he will pretty much never ever go there. Pretty much only ever fight him in 5, 4, and 7. The areas with the caves. Alright, where the hell is Chacha? Is he still dead or something? Oh, he can also fly up to the ceiling. And he will actually fly sometimes. Not like in the cave, but he will do it when he trying to get out of the cave like when he's in four he will or in this area as well I think he will crawl up on that ledge over there crawl into the cave and fly out of it and then go to four or when he's in four he'll go to seven that's pretty much the only time you're ever gonna see him fly and maybe when he comes out of a pitfall trap I'm not sure because I never really bring traps to this type of missions because I generally just prefer to go for the kill because these annoying ass animals ain't walking out of here alive. Also, I just broke his, I think his chest. It's kind of hard to tell with him because everything about him just looks the same. And it's not really that easy to see when something's broken. But you can break his head, you can break his chest, and you can break his anus. And that sounded kind of gay. But whatever. Oh yeah, also his walking hurt you. Pretty stupid, I hate it. It's not as bad as the Raffians walking though, that is just horrible. Oh, he's taking another dump. Oh yeah, he can also dump these big ass piles of poison which will explode after a few seconds. 
I do not want to know what this guy has been eating. To make him crap giant piles of poisonous poop. That was a lot of peas. Also, I bounce off his tail, which sucks. So I guess I'll just shoot it because shots don't bounce. And I'm out of range already. That sucks about it. Uh oh. Shield? Oh. Nothing came out. Having a little uh, trouble performing there, Giganox. They have pills for that, you know. Oh crap, get off me. Ah, I hate it. You can't get them off without putting your weapon away when you're using a gun lance. With some of the other weapons, who can. Uh, which still perform a roll when you're dodging, you can shake them off without putting your weapon away, but the gun lance doesn't do that because rolling around with this giant thing in your hands is gonna end up getting messy. So you have to put it away. Oh crap, why did I turn there? I could have blocked it easily. Oh well. Giganox. Oh, he's getting tired. Kinda hard to tell with him because he doesn't really have, like, facial expressions to express that he's in pain or something. No, he just starts drooling out of his front end. Possibly also out of his anus. Not sure. I haven't really taken a good look at it yet. But yeah, if your anus is leaking, then that is just... Oh, jeez. See, that has so much range on it. It's insane. Also, Giggy, die. You're annoying. You're just gonna jump on me, and I don't want that. Where's he going? Oh, he's just going after Cha-Cha. It's fine with me. Oh, Cha-Cha's poisoned. Honestly, I don't care, because he can't die anyway. Sure, he'll go away to heal, but I can handle this guy. He's hardly the hardest monster in the game. Though, if you have... If you do get affected by his poison whenever he does it, then that does make him a lot more difficult. Because not only are you fighting him, you're also fighting to stay alive whenever he's... Oh, crap. Just when I needed it. Also, if you're fighting him in here, you're also probably going to have to deal with the baggies that are in this area that might put you to sleep and put you in a really awful position. Are you leaving? Oh, yeah, he's leaving. He's going to four again. So, yeah, I've pretty much gone to every cave area, like, multiple times. No baggy. Just go away. I killed your leader, like, five episodes ago, and I'm not going to deal with you right now. Where's he going? Damn it, need to sharpen. Alright, just... Oh, Cha-Cha's back. And still, I have speed sharpening, so I can pretty much sharpen whenever the hell I feel like it. I should really put speed sharpening on some of my other armor sets, like the armor sets I'm using now in high rank and G rank don't have speed sharpening, and I kind of miss it, because it's really helpful. I mean... Without speed sharpening, you need to, like, pull the stone over the weapon, like, four times. Not every monster gives you that much time to do it. But most monsters will give you enough time to just pull the stone over once, if you're using speed sharpening. Also, speed eating, which is kind of the same thing, but for eating meat and using potions. Which is also really helpful. I have that on the, uh, the high rank Roggy armor, I think. But they changed it since try and try. Speed eating worked for both potions and meat. And in ultimate, it's been turned into two different levels. Level 1, which you get if you have 10 points invested in the skill, allows you to eat meat faster. And level 2, which requires 15 points invested, but also allow you to uh, ingest potions faster. So, yeah, that kind of sucks that they changed that, because I loved that skill in try. So helpful. Oh, well. Oh, there he is. Just get down already. That's what I hate about this guy. Most of the time, fighting him is going to take a while because he just spends so much time up on the ceiling and I would I had no reason to do that Superman dive there. He wasn't even going to hit me. Oh, and he's back to normal. No more raging for you, buddy. Uh -huh, come on, get down. Come on. There we go. Just so annoying when he keeps on doing that. That's why I love fighting him in Area 3, because there's no cave ceiling for him to hang on, so he can't do all that crap. Sadly, he is not gonna go there. Hardly ever. Although I think his subspecies does tend to go there sometimes. Oh, 
No dump for you. My bullets interrupt your shit. Or egg laying or whatever. Where does he keep getting all these fertilized eggs anyway? Or is he like one of those species that just breeds whenever the hell it feels like it because it can. It's like both sexes at once. I wouldn't put it past the Giganox because it already is such a hideous freak in nature. Surely it's gonna be able to do that as well. Oh, and how is he not poisoning the baggies? They're not immune to poison. But the great baggy armor would have negate poison as well. I guess. I'm not sure what skills the great baggy armor has, actually. Although I remember them not being particularly useful. I think he gave you, like, ice attack up, which is really strange because the great baggy doesn't even use any ice attacks, so why should he strengthen them when you're wearing his armor? It's kind of strange. Oh well. I think it did have, like, a team leader or something, which makes your shakalaka companion more efficient. Which I guess I could use because Cha Cha is a freaking retard. Oh, oh, he's going back to five, and he's limping. All right, this shouldn't take much longer, thank goodness, because it's been going on for quite a while. But yeah, if you're having trouble with this guy, if he keeps poisoning you and killing you and kicking your ass, then just get the Roggy armor. It makes him a lot easier, and it also helps against a lot of other monsters that are going to use poison on you. Like the Raffian, which I think is going to be our next target. Oh, there we go, he's dead. Alright, let's see what stuff this creepy bastard gives me. Ugh, just die already. There we go. Alright, we get Giganox hide. He's pretty much all hide, so that makes sense that we get that. Another hide. Can I get some other stuff, please? I think hide is like his most common drop. Oh, and a claw. Wait, he doesn't even have claws. He has these thick sausage, like the sausage fingers with the suction cups on it so he can crawl on the ceiling, but he doesn't have any damn claws. Does not make sense. Should have carved like a Giganox sausage finger instead. But I'll take all the armor spheres I get from mining. Well. Oh, that thing is so nasty. Can I get some more mining in? I guess. Earth Crystal, oh, I need a crap ton of those. Because you pretty much need like 100 of those every time you upgrade a particularly rare weapon. And I think I will be getting that weapon. I'm not sure if I'm going to be using it on camera, but I'm definitely getting it. Ah. Okay, rewards, more hide, venom gland, uncanny hide, venom poison sack, venom gland. Another hide, another claw, some bones, some armor spheres. And is that a cool drink? Oh, Pale Extract. Oh, I think that's pretty handy. Use that to make uh, Mega Demon Drugs and Armor Skins. Make you a little stronger. But yeah, he's just over 10 meters tall. He's not very large. Although I guess the stretching does make up for it. Anyway, that was the Giganox. Join me for another hunt in the next episode of Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.